to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Isaiah The Book of the Prophet Isaiah Chapter 9 Chapter 9 Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of reason against him, and join his enemies together, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For every one is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Chapter 10 Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed, to turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the fatherless. 
And what will ye do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against an hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge, to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so. But it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Calno as Carchemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom. For I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day, and shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth, and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He is come to Aiath, he is passed to Migron, at Michmash he hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Ramah is afraid. Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up thy voice, O daughters of Galim. Cause it to be heard unto Laish, O poor Anathoth. Madmina is removed. The inhabitants of Gebam gather themselves to flee. As yet shall he remain at Nob that day. He shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. 
Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Across the world.
For our strength is almost gone Faint, weary and worn We stand today We would see Jesus For our strength we will renew Hear our prayer, Lord, as we call Revive us again
Lord. How great our God is tonight. And that great God, creator, redeemer, emancipator, healer, deliverer, is asking you a question. Wilt thou be made whole? In your heart, in your spirit, in your body, in your life, in your family, will you be made whole tonight? Think of yourself as the only one right here. I know there are multitudes, of course, we can see, but the Lord singles you out tonight. And he said, your night has come. Night of power. Night of miracle. Night of salvation. Night of freedom. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you. You are a God that cannot fail. You cannot come back and say, I'm sorry, I promised you that. Everything you promised, your people, Lord, affirm me tonight. Confirm me tonight. Perform me tonight. Salvation, healing, deliverance, miracle, supernatural encounter. Do it right now, Lord, for everyone without exception. All our people here in front of me, all our people in our state, Lagos, all our people in Nigeria, all our people in Africa, everyone connected all over the world. Lord, I pray it will be a night of the supernatural for everyone. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. I rejoice with you that you are here on this special night. The night of special supernatural touch from the Lord. You will have a definite one-on-one -on -one encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you. I said you. Where are you? You will have a personal one-on-one -on -one encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, the Lord, through this vessel of clay, is speaking to us on total emancipation from the threefold bondage. Bondage is what ties a man, not only his side, I can see that. Bondage is not when, God tie, when somebody ties your legs, we can see that. Those ones are superficial. But when the mind is tied up, the spirit is tied up, the soul is tied up, when the man, the inner man, the one, the engine inside a man that makes a man to move, to act, to sing, to live, and to do the right thing, when that engine in a man is in bondage, the man is next to useless. But tonight, Christ has come to set you free from the threefold bondage. I'm going to read the very words of Christ unto you. And he said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. In John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, Christ is talking now, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make 
you free. I was waiting for your amen there. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, it says, If the Son, the Son of God, the power in the whole universe, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Look at me. Let my eyeballs clash with your eyeballs tonight. You. I'm talking about you. You will be made free. Tonight, I bring the message to you in three muscles, in three parts. Subtitles. Number one, the fetters of the triple bondage. The fetters of the triple bondage. Number two, the faith in our triumphant bondage breaker. The sun be invisible, you might not see him with your natural eyes, but with the eyes of your heart. You can see him is right there by your side. Is the yoke breaker? Is the bondage breaker? Is the healer? Is the savior? Is the redeemer? And for you tonight, every yoke in your life, every bondage in your life, it will break in Jesus' name. <laughs> number three, number one, the fetters. Number two, the faith. Number three, our freedom with threefold benefits. Our freedom. My freedom. My freedom. You're free tonight. From sin, you'll be free. From sickness, you'll be free. From satanic affliction, you'll be free tonight in Jesus' name. Look at number one there. The fetters of the triple bondage. When Christ Delivered his word, his message to those people on that memorable, unforgetful, unforgetful day. Look at their response in John chapter 8, reading from verse 33. They answered him, will be Abraham's seed. I need to remind, I think you must know this one. Those Jewish people, they were deeply, highly, broadly religious. And everything that came to them, they always fell back to religion. And so, when Jesus said, you shall know the truth, they thought, they knew the truth already. What they were thinking about, they knew the truth as Moses declared. What they were thinking about, they knew the truth that David wrote about in the Psalms. Many of them memorized the Psalms. And so they thought, I know the truth. I've read Isaiah. I've read Jeremiah. I've read the Bible through many times. You shall know the truth. They thought they knew the truth. Don't be so quick to talk when Christ is talking. God sent Christ from heaven. If Moses had told them all there is to know, why will Christ come? If David had told them, all they needed to know, why would Christ have come? If the Jewish religion or your own religion had told you everything you needed to know, why would Christ come? Christ came, the personification of the truth. And he said, you will know the truth. And then he answered him, 
will be Abraham's seed, religious people, and were never in bondage to any man. <laughs> Can you tell how religious people tell lies? Religious lies, moral lies, educational lies, scientific lies. Now, they were in bondage in Egypt. Everybody knew that. They were in bondage to the Assyrians. Everybody knew that. They were in bondage to their own sin, to their own transgression. Everybody knew that the things I wanted to do, I could not do. The things I don't want to do, that's what I do. They were in bondage to the elements of the world. And they said, we well, are never in bondage to any man. Tonight, don't tell any religious lie before the Lord. He knows it all. If you come and you say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I know the truth, I have the truth now, I have Christ, and I'm going to be set free, it will set you free. Let me hear a good amen. And so they said, how sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. When you question the Lord, you're like an examiner. You want to evaluate. You want to analyze. You want to put him right. Anyone, 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 anywhere that his major aim is to correct God of all knowledge. His major challenge is to put right the statement he wants to edit the message of Christ. That one is not going to receive anything because he's trying to correct the eternal. But when Christ says something and you say, Lord, you are right, I am wrong, you're Savior, I'm a sinner, you're a healer, I'm the sick one, you're deliverer, I am the one in bondage. When you accept and you say, Lord, you are right, I am wrong, your salvation will come, your deliverance will come, and your healing miracle will come in Jesus' name. Now, they ask a question, how say you that we shall be free? Look at verse 34. Verse 34 says, Jesus answered them. There's no question Jesus cannot answer. Every question of your life, every question of your family, every question in your weakness, every question in your paralysis. The, paral the paralysis of your heart and your mind, your soul and your spirit. Every question you have tonight, it will answer that question. Look at that. It's very late, very late. I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Who is that talking about? Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. What sin? Wrongdoing. Anything would do wrong, that sin. What sin? Imperfection in our talk, in our action, in our attitude, in our behavior, in our interaction with people. And so, who is a sinner? The sinner is the imperfect one. And I'm looking for anyone that will say, since he was born, in his looking, in his hearing, in his touching, in his feeling, in his walking, in anything he did, he had lived a perfect life. A perfect life. That's the perfect liar. But the one who says, I know, there is imperfection in my life. That's the sin. 
Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And then in verse 35, and the servant abideth not in the house forever. That is, if we don't come to Christ and allow him to charge the dead battery of her life, I told you, every man has the inner man. That inner man is the engine that moves us in the battery. When the battery is clear, good, functioning, that's what makes the phone to work. But many times, our batteries are dead. The inner man is dead. The inward, inside engine in our life, dead. And because the battery is dead, what can I do? What can you do? What can we do? I will bring the battery of the inner man to Christ tonight. It will recharge your battery. Your life will come back again. Your life will come with three power, new power in Jesus' name. The fetters that bind us, our sin, and Satan, there is Satan in the world. There is no culture. There is no language where Satan does not have the name they call him. And whether you see him or not, in fact, he walks when he is invisible. When you can't see him, you can turn that thing, you can downgrade that thing, you can spoil that thing, you, know? you can spoil your character, you can spoil your name, you can spoil everything, Bondage to sin. Bondage to Satan. Bondage to sickness. There was a man many days, many years, actually centuries ago, he saw sickness in his village. He saw sickness in his community. And he decided, I want to go and live in a place where there is no sickness, no suffering, no sorrow. And so he packed his things and got to this locality. And he has an old, aged man there. He said, Are there sick people here? Are there impotent people here? Are there people here who suffer? In sorrow. And the old man asked him, Where you are coming from? Any sickness there? Any sorrow there? Any suffering there? The man said, Yes. He said, Just like where you are coming from here, there are people with sorrow and suffering and sickness. So he said, Okay, bye bye. And he went to another place and repeated the same. And he told him the same thing. And eventually he realized there is no place in the world. Whatever the civilization, no place in the world. Whatever their development, there is sickness, there is sorrow, there is suffering. It's only when Christ comes, the man of Galilee, the one that went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. When he comes to you and he knocks at your door, that's when sin will be removed. Satan will be taken away from your life. He's still in the world, but he will not be in your life. And then sickness, it will heal in Jesus' name. All your fetters tonight, it will break the fetters. Break the yoke. Destroy all the works of the devil. I come to number two here. Number two, if the fetters are going to be broken, if the Lord is going to take away all those things 
that press us down, that destroy us, all the things that make our life useless. If Christ is going to do that, what do I need? Faith. The faith in our triumphant bondage breaker. What's faith? Faith is trust. You trust him. You believe in him. You know there is no name under heaven in any nation, in any country. There is no name in any community by which we can be saved by the name of Jesus. And you say, I trust my life into your hand. I trust my past, the guilt of the past. I turn that to you. I turn my present, the lifelessness and the hopelessness of the present, I turn it to you and I turn my future, the uncertainty of the future, I turn that into your hand, your past, your present, your future, you trust him and you trust your life into his hand. Then total freedom will come. Your own freedom, present freedom, perfect freedom, desirable freedom. It will come in your life in Jesus' name. Now, now. You see, good food, seeing it does not satisfy your hunger. You see, good food, you can describe it, you can talk to other people, that does not satisfy your hunger. You see, good food, and you can even recommend it to other people, that does not satisfy your hunger. What satiates, what satisfies, what feels, what solves the problem of the hunger is your trust that is good for you. You stretch out your hand, you take it, it's in the taking, in the eating, in the accepting that your problem will be solved. Hearing about the truth, about Christ, you love what you have heard, you appreciate what you have heard, you tell other people what you have heard, that's good, but it does not solve the problem. It's the faith, it's the trust, is the confidence, I know He is the solution to my problem. He will be my Savior, He will be my Lord, that is what will break the yoke in your life. Give me a good amen. The faith in our triumphant bondage breaker. Look at John chapter 8, verse 30. And he spake, as he spake these words, many believed on him. One by one by one, I believe. Over there, I believe. Over there, I believe. I've tried all I could before this time. I couldn't solve my problem, but now I know. Here is the yoke breaker. Here is the bondage breaker. Here is the savior. Here is the redeemer. Here I am, I believe. As he spoke the word, they didn't look at the person beside them, a religious person there. Should I believe? It was a personal decision. That's one, two, three, ten, thirty, hundred, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. As he prayed, many believed on him. And then he said in verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If he continue, continue, Lord Jesus, they believe now. Why are you saying if he continue? The tendency in man is to always be drawn back to where they are coming from. I learned of a particular family. 
Their child had been born dead and dumb. And a great man of God went to have a crusade in their town. And as the man, the evangelist preached, at the end of the message of that day, lo and behold, the dumbness vanished away. And the deafness vanished away. And the boy, the child, could hear, and everything was perfect. And that man with his wife, they were so happy. And they went back home. And when they got back home, they called their neighbors together. And then they made a feast, celebration. And they brought their idol. And they gave the glory to their idol, who they said had done this great miracle for them. As they finished that ceremony, that boy became deaf and dumb again. Why? They were giving the glory they should give to the Almighty God. They gave it a wooden idol. They didn't continue. But thank God they, they understood. And so they packed all those idols together. And the following day after that, their celebration, they came to the crusade and handed over all the idols of wood and all those things. They handed over to the evangelists and they made bonfire out of them. And that night, they prayed again, merciful God. Somebody help me shout, merciful God. That boy became well again. The ears were open and the tongue loosed. Look at the way you are clapping as if there's something behind the there. Our God is a wonderful God. That's why Jesus said, He will deliver you from the triple bondage. But then, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. As you come to the Lord, you will continue. Yeah. I said you will continue. Yeah. And miracles, miracles of power will continue to multiply in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Tonight, it will forgive you. Yeah. It will save you. Yeah. It will set you free. Yeah. And every bondage in your life, it will break and destroy. I'm coming to point number three. We've looked at the fetters. We've looked at the faith. Now we have our freedom. My freedom. My freedom. Our freedom with threefold benefits. Our freedom. The Lord will set you free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. I'm free from satanic affliction. Look at this in John chapter 8, verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. What if I say that by myself, to myself, of myself. I want to take those words of Christ and say those words by myself. Of myself. And say it to myself. If the Son therefore shall make me free, I shall be free indeed. Say to yourself, if the Son, therefore, shall make me free, I shall be free indeed. Say it of yourself. If the Son, therefore, shall make me free, I shall be free indeed. You know, sometimes we talk to ourselves. There's nobody here. 
Oh, well, see? No, 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 no. I never talk. You, you talk to yourself. You're sitting down, and then that thing is talking inside you. And what it talks inside you can make you feel happy. I'm good. I'm nice. I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. Talking to yourself, and then you're happy. But if you say, why is this happening to me? I'm miserable. I'm dirty. I'm defiled. I'm dejected. Nobody loves me. When you say that to yourself, it makes you miserable. Now, when you have faith in the Lord, here is what you say by yourself, of yourself, to yourself. Since the sun. Since, not if now, since the Son shall make me free, I will be free indeed. Say to yourself, Tonight, there's going to be a confirmation in your life. You know, I always give you these testimonies of what God does. And what God is doing. We have a man from Abuja. He was healed of stroke after responding and trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord healed him. You have testimony here tonight. Let this Francis from Abuja, let him tell you himself when Jesus came and set him free, the same way he will set you free. My name is Francis Siwobode. I'm living in Abuja, in Cuba. I just, uh, I just passed uh, Deeper Life Church, then they do crusade, that's global crusade. One pastor there just see me, I stop me with a with my walking stick, say that I, I believe that God is here to hear me. I say yes. He say why can't you join them? I say okay, I'm coming. The first day I joined them, where Papa Kumuyi started preaching, he entered me where where, and when he spoke that uh, everything that is disturbing everyone here should leave, I witnessed it in my body because, oh, from here to down, paralyzed, you just be like the pommy. Ice water. Everywhere cool. I can walk, I can, I can raise my leg, uh, my hand. I can do everything since that day till now. And that's a crusade. I say yes. Then just do the crusade because of me. Because since that time till today, I am free. I say yes. The God of uh, Kumuyi, let him be my God from today. Because he has surprised me. I am free. It will be confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Now, 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 I have a lady here. The name, Rebecca. Let her tell you what happened by the power of God. And tonight will be a repetition of great miracle in your life in Jesus name Rebecca talk to us tell us what the Lord has done my name is Rebecca Pam I thank God for what he did in my life last year at the November edition of the wonders of the cross crusade I thank God for how he delivered me from the hands of ritualists actually that day on the 26th, I was about to run some errands for myself and the house. And then I went to the bank. From the bank, I noticed people, someone was following me. And so when I get to the heart of the town, this impression was still in my heart. It was so heavy. And then I tried to maneuver my ways to run away from hands way, and I blanked out. My daughter, Rebecca, left home going for an errand. From there, we didn't see her again, but we hold on to God, believing that God will do it and the devil is a liar. So it reminds me of the testimony of a sister during one of the global crusades that same year. 
who was kidnapped and was taken to an unknown place to her. So with this testimony, I strongly believe that my daughter is not dead. Nothing happened to her. God allowed her to go for a purpose. And so I recovered a little of myself. I tried to, I tried to escape, but then I was drawn back. They told me I cannot go out, that there is no escape for me. After some days, one night, someone tapped me. As I was following the person, he said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Joss. What's your name? I said, my name is Rebecca. He said, what are you doing here? This place is dangerous. If you had spent any minute here, you would have been dead. He said, do you have any relatives I can come in contact with? I gave my elder sister's number, and then they both talked. And so after that, he put me in a vehicle that was heading towards my state, and then he asked me to go. After I slept, I woke up, and then I asked the, the driver, please, where are we now? And then the driver now said, you just left Oyo State. I said, wow, Oyo State? And then I was just thanking God that he delivered me. He delivered me from the hands of people that wanted to kill me. I just praise the Lord for my life, for how he brought me back safe and sound to my parents. I'll take your back. Not only back home, back to happiness. Back to joy. Back to victory. Back to healing. Back to salvation. Back to total freedom. Are you ready there? I'm looking for him. I'm looking for her there. Are you ready there? Your miracle time has come. Salvation time has come. As you trust in the Lord, lean on the Lord, have confidence in the Lord, and say, Lord, you are my only Savior, only Lord, tonight, it will break the bondage of sin out of your life. And the power of Satan, it will take away out of your life. And every form of sickness, infirmity, Everything, impotence, it'll take it away from your life. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The Lord has come to set you free. First, from your sin. He'll forgive you. He'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that salvation? You want that forgiveness? You want that freedom? What you could not do by yourself. You couldn't overcome all those bad habits by yourself. Christ has now come and he says, I'll forgive. I'll set you free. I'll heal you. I'll save you. Raise up your hand there. Lord, I want your salvation. Lord, I want your forgiveness. Now, if it is so simple, why don't you do it now? Why are you going to delay? Him? If the Lord in his mercy, because he is your savior, and he's calling upon you now, and he says, just raise up your hand, let me know that you want my forgiveness, my freedom, my salvation. Raise up that hand there. Anywhere you are, you are hearing the message over the radio. You are watching on television. And you are online in any nation of the world. Anywhere. Raise up that hand. Your salvation is now. If you are raising up your hand, stand up there, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Without any shame, without looking around, without thinking, 
Am I going to accept I'm a sinner in the midst of people like this? That's the truth now. You are a sinner. And you tell the Lord, I know I am. And I want your forgiveness. And I want your freedom. I can't set myself free. And you are the only one that can set me free. I want your salvation. I cannot set myself. And I accept. I believe. I confess that you are my savior now. Stand up there. God bless you. God bless you there. Are you still there? Where are you? Are you thinking it over? What are you thinking over? He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to set you free. Get up right there and let heaven know that you want the salvation right now. And as you're standing up, just by yourself there, before, between you and the Lord, tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm in bondage to sin. But you'll come to set me free. And I accept. I believe. I'm saved now. I trust. I trust you. Thank you. Thank you. And tell him, as I'm saved, I'm forgiven now. I will not go back to my vomit. I will continue with the Lord. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we trust your promise that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. These have indicated that they want you, Christ, to be their Savior and to be their Lord. And I know you will not reject anyone, Lord, in your mercy, in your love, by your grace, save everyone now. Touch their lives. Transform their lives. Grant them the freedom that guilt and condemnation will be totally taken away. Confirm the joy and the peace and the strength and the new life of salvation in every life right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You're saved. As you trust, as you believe the words of the Lord Jesus, you're free and you're saved. Keep on standing. The counselors will come to you there and they will, you know, take your details so we can help you later for you to continue. In the Lord. I call on our moderating pastor tonight to help us during this time. And after he's through, I'll come back. You take your miracle back home. It's a special privilege to be born into the kingdom of God. These are special people. Angels are now rejoicing because. These have come into the kingdom of God. Counselors, please take your position by all responders to the word of salvation. Quickly, please, let's do that. We're going to take our time to gather names and addresses of our brothers and sisters who have just given their lives to Christ. Please. Let's ensure names are clearly written with their telephone numbers and WhatsApp numbers indicated. Let's do that, please. It's very important we capture all the provided information in your sleep. Let the writings be eligible. Those who cannot write, please help them to write. The names in capital letters, the numbers, telephone numbers clearly written. The program hasn't ended. We still have miracle time. The first day was miraculous. Yesterday was just marvelous. 
Tonight is going to be a master stroke. Blind eyes will open. Your miracle will come to you. The lame man will walk. You are going to rejoice tonight. And after the program has ended, please don't go away. We are going to listen and hear your own testimony also in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you expectant tonight? What is it that you want the Lord to do for you? Start talking to the Lord. Tonight is my night. I will be healed. I will be healed. All the yokes will be broken. Joy will follow me to my home tonight. Be expectant. The Lord is going to touch you. The Lord is going to heal you. You must receive something tangible in the presence of the Lord tonight. Our counselors, please help us to quickly get all the information that we need from our brethren that just come to the Lord. Please, you have a package that will be given to you by, uh, by the convener of the Global Crusade. So please receive from our counselors. If you are watching, counselors, please, let's do our work quickly. Make sure that the writings are clear. Get all the information that is needed. If you are watching online and you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, please visit the link showing on the screen now. dclmhub.com slash connect with Christ. And fill the form so we can assist you further. In your new walk with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five four four four. 9263. I repeat, plus 234 915 444 9263. Counselors, thank you very much for the work that you are doing. It's very, very, very important that you collect all the information. Don't be in a hurry. Make sure that those names are written in capital letters. And the numbers, telephone numbers, WhatsApp numbers, clearly written. Tomorrow we are going to have a banquet for all those that have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ here on this ground at the counselor's stand and the time is 3 p.m. You've got to be there. You have to be there. There's so much that the convener of this program has prepared for you. Please make sure you show up 3 p.m. at the counselor's stand tomorrow. You have to be expectant tonight. I'm believing God that blind eyes are going to open. The lame will walk. You will receive from the Lord tonight special miracle. Begin to prepare your mind. Your miracle is now. And you will share your testimony. 
We will rejoice with you. The power of the Lord is present here and it's moving around already. And you can begin to say to yourself, I am marked down for miracle. I am marked down for healing. I am marked down for the thing that I've been asking the Lord to do for me. Please cancel us. Let's be fast. Let's ensure that the names are well written. The addresses clearly indicated. There are telephone numbers. There are WhatsApp numbers. Are clearly written on the slips. Please don't forget to hand to all the people that have just given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ the package from the convener of the GZK Global Crusade. Very, very important. Something good is going to happen to you tonight. Something wonderful is going to happen to you tonight. If you are joining us online, be prepared. God will reach out to you. The people in Asia, the people in the United States, in Australia, in Canada, where you are watching us, in your homes, wherever you are, be expectant. Start talking to the Lord. Please, if you are on the left, if you are feeling it on the left side, please can you wave to me so that I can see? Thank you. At the middle, thank you. At the right hand, thank you. At the back, please remember that tomorrow at 3 p.m., we are going to have a banquet for all our brothers and sisters that have come to the Lord from the beginning of this program, the first day, the second day, and the third day. Thank you very much. It's now time for the power of God to touch you. It's not time for your miracle. As we bring to the stage our pastor, the evangelist, pastor, doctor, W.R. Kumuye. Praise the Lord. God is asking you, will you be made whole? It will happen to you. The Son of God, our Savior, Lord, Healer, Deliverer, will touch your right there. Amen. When you hear the final Amen, it is done. Amen. Anywhere you are, you are listening over the radio, you are watching on television, online you are there, in any congregation, anywhere in the world, the word of power is coming to you right now. Amen. When you hear the final Amen, you check up, it is done. Amen. And then you send that test your testimony to us. And those who are here, I'm looking at somebody there, you will have a testimony. Raise up one hand and let the other hand, when you have the challenge, the final amen will clear everything out of your body. Father, in Jesus' name. You are the same forever. You say, I am God. I change not. Lord Jesus, Savior, Deliverer, Redeemer, Healer, Miracle Worker. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what you did before, Lord we believe you'll do it right now. Amen. Lord, everyone, having any challenge, 
blindness, deafness, dumbness, Lord, in your power, touch and heal them in Jesus' name. Goiter, hunchback, elephantiasis, hernia, fibroid, any swelling in any part of the body. Lord, I pray, remove it now in Jesus' name. Internal incurable disease, cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> HIV AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Sequel cell, with all the attendant pain, I pray, Lord, you do a creative miracle for him, for her, that that sickle cell will be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray that those who are lame, paralyzed, or they have stroke, or they have broken bones, Lord, I pray you touch them now. Amen. You heal them now. Amen. You mend the bones now and give them the power, the strength to rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the name of your sickness, whatever the description of your affliction, I speak the word of power into your life. Amen. Be healed in Jesus' name. Here, on radio, television, online, everywhere that we connect by faith and trust. A miracle everywhere. Demonstration of mighty power everywhere. Confirm it in every life. With a smile on every face. Testimony in every mouth. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. It is done. You got it. Check up yourself. You'll find the testimony there.